This is Twit. So what Musk is doing is not terribly dissimilar. You know, he's he's testing these things to either destruction or success, and that's how you learn. What you don't want to do, however, is hurt anybody or have too big an impact on the community when you're doing it. And that is the problem with the much discussed launch um, launch platform. And mm -hmm. you were there, Tarek, so why don't you go ahead and take that? Uh, to talk about the launch, you mean the launch pad itself? And what yeah, and, and what you, I mean, I assume once the thing was up and you were done tracking it up to the point that it destructed, when you looked down, you probably saw a big mushroom cloud coming well, out of the, the launch area, right? I can I can talk about you know the the launch when we watched it take off, a lift off. Uh, we're about five miles away uh, uh, from the from the pad across like a, a waterway uh, from from Boca Chica Beach, so it's very picturesque and. Uh, because of the way they built the launch pad, when those 33, probably 30 engines ignited, uh, and they started just immediately carving out a massive crater underneath the pad, yeah. the way they built the pad. And it kicked up in a, ma a, a huge amount of debris to so, us. Excuse me, can I just jump in for a second? So the pad looks like a milk stool sitting yes. over a flat body of concrete. And normally the way NASA and other nations have done rocket launches, you have a flame trench that ducks the exhaust down and away from that area. And sometimes a water suppression system, which floods that area with water to keep the acoustic waves were coming back and slamming in the bottom of the rocket. SpaceX did neither of those. They cast a big flat piece of concrete and said, well, that'll probably work. Yeah. And, and it's a little, it's, it's pretty difficult to dig a really deep flame trench with the water table so high right. uh, on the, on the beach there too. And in 2020, Elon Musk sent out a tweet saying that they were looking at not having a flame uh, a div a diverter uh, at the, um, at the pad and that they think, you know, they're, they're hoping for success, but it could, and it could end up being a big mistake. Uh, from, from the view, from the spectator point of view, it was spectacular because you, you, you get to zero, you see this initial flash of the engines and you hear, you, you don't hear anything cause it's, you know, far away and the sound right. hasn't reached you yet. And then you see this massive plume of exhaust around like you would see for any big launch, but it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and it swallows up the whole rocket. And this is a 40, story tall rocket, right? It's the, the size of a skyscraper. And so then you can't see anything anymore and no one knows what's going on. Did it abort? You know, did it fail? They clearly didn't explode because we would have seen that. Um, and then very, very slowly, like, like mind numbingly slowly, you start to see the rocket lift off. And that's when everyone just lost their minds uh, in the, the video that I, I shared. And it was spectacular to see. It was only later that we, when we saw those those close-up images of the pad uh, and in mm. fact there's um uh, rvg uh aerial photography uh recently did a pass over the pad and they, they they got really close pictures of what it looks like now um or if you see the drone video flying off to the side you can see offshore these massive splashes in the ocean where the debris chunks of concrete yeah right. chunks of concrete and you can actually see it in the close-up videos in spacex's own video you can see huge pieces of concrete flying up halfway up the rocket. Again, that's 20 stories. That's 200 feet. You know that, that, right. that it's flying up. Um, so that that's what we saw there after, after the fact. So was it a mistake? I think Elon Musk would say yes. You know, he said that it could be a mistake. Now it was. They, 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 they're planning to do uh, what they called a water-cooled steel plate beneath, beneath the, the pad itself. Um, I'm not sure what that looks like, if it's like shaped in a way to angle the, the plume and the sound away or not. Uh, but uh, after you and Mike spoke last week, uh, last episode, uh, Elon came out and said, well, we think that we can get the pad fixed in one to two months, which sounds extremely ambitious to get this stuff done. Uh, but, you know, it's possible that they can use a lot of the structure that's still there. The milk stool is still there. The concrete is still there. The uh, the tower, the giant Mechazella tower with those little chopstick, you know, le levers that that move the yeah. starship around, the arms that that move the uh, uh, the the structure around. It's all still there, and it and it appears to be in working order. But uh, but there's a lot of, uh, of other things that have to get fixed. Well, Clearly, the, the, cr the crater <laughs> beneath the pad. Um, and, uh, and, and I'm not sure if you've seen the other photos or if our listeners have well, seen Well, we have them. those on uh, 
in case ants here, uh, we have those on lines 37 and 38 of the rundown. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, um, uh, clear dents and, and dings like very visible in the tank farm that right. feeds Which is the, the rocket. Too close. Oh, it's, it's really way close. too close. I know they only had so much property, but the, the, the stuff and, and the other starships kind of stacked up nearby. If I had seen that in a science fiction illustration as a kid, I would have gone, those things are too yeah. close together. They're going to so, blow up. So you can see right here, the, 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 it's just a, it's, it's like the engines fired 7.7 .7 million pounds of thrust from the super heavy booster, just like digging a, a hole. 17. Uh, seven. Million, yeah. Million yeah. pounds. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, and and there oh, I'm is, thinking about the propellant capacity. That was there is some conversation about you know what what damaged the engines of the 33 engines on the first stage, of which somewhere between five and eight failed, depending on who you're listening to and what phase of the flight you're talking about. Because I guess a couple of them sputtered as as the rockets ascending. You could see these little blips of yellow and orange flame that yeah. you're not supposed to be seeing from. From that at least not as intensely as that that look like hydraulic fluid burning or something so of course there's all kinds of conjecture getting news out of spacex takes a lot of patience so we don't know yet but i think um it's safe to say and, and by the way a, a couple of very smart people including Dwayne day who i follow who's a, a heavy duty space guy had noted that it looks like some of the nozzles might have even been knocked off and mm -hmm. when you think about what was going on on that launch pad for the many seconds it took it to lift off, all kinds of things could happen. What didn't happen, thank God, is it didn't sit there long enough. I mean, you saw how the bottom of that one leg is completely eroded out from the flames. I wonder, had that thing begin to lose structural integrity, the launch stand itself, and begin to topple, I mean, if you have a rocket tipping over and going kaboom or heading off in the wrong direction, as our model rockets used to do a lot, even a flight termination system isn't going to save the damage on the ground. So that that would have been very bad. And that's the one place that I think, uh, you know, as has been happening where they deserve some some criticism for perhaps rushing this or cutting too many a few too many corners with this launch system. So if there's a, a failure in this whole test, I would say besides uh, perhaps the foresight to see what could have happened here, it could be credibility. You know, we could, we are, we're already seeing some concerns about SpaceX in terms of this test, even though it was partially successful, given that the FAA now has to do an investigation, God knows how long that'll take, and SpaceX has to repair that pad and all the other things that have to happen. You know, we're counting down to this version of this spacecraft being the lander for the Artemis three mission, which is supposed to be snicker snicker in two years. We know it's going to be longer than that, but you know, the clock is ticking and I think there's a real danger of people losing confidence in the company because of events like this. What do you think? The credibility issue I think is going to be really, really important. Now I do believe that SpaceX really set expectations very low on the public side for this. They tried um, to, they did, they, they did, they did try to, but um, the people listen to that necessarily. Well, there, there's that. The, and 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 I think we can all agree. We just, we saw the video. We saw that 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 kind of walkthrough of of the pad and the, the mm -hmm. damage uh, that's there. You can see the dented tanks. You can see the debris strewn all around. Um, so that's a hit to like what what the success of this is. Um, however, uh, actually, just just a, a day before this episode that we're recording, uh, NASA's chief was asked the, the specifically like how. How, how realistic is getting to the moon in 2025 going to be when the giant rocket that's going to carry the lander just blew up? And uh, and Bill Nelson, uh, the, the NASA chief, said, you know, that they're not they're not they're not over concerned. He said, uh, and I quote, "It's not a downturn for for SpaceX because they are quote unquote." hardware rich and this is to the point right. that you were mentioning earlier uh they have this rocket uh this rocket garden at starbase that has at least three if not four uh uh near finished or 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 in under under construction starships there's at least one booster uh uh the booster eight out like standing up there the, the next one to fly standing up there ready to go um that they were going to 
put some more advancements on. And there's another one that they're, they're nearly finished with in the, in the kind of, they have like a, like a, a couple of VABs um, already that have other vehicles in them as well. They've got a lot of stuff to work with uh, there. So all that's really holding them up is whatever they need to do with this pad and the results from their own internal mishap investigation, which you know there's a SpaceX team uh, working on it. And then, of course, the FAA's investigation, which they announced shortly after uh, the the Starship launch that, they, that they're, they're going to have a, a, an anomaly investigation. They're going to look into it. They'll work with SpaceX. Uh, there's debris all over. A lot of it was washing up uh, over the evening. I was walking on the beach at 11 o'clock at night on South Padre Island, and I ran into some SpaceX fans who were out there hoping to see uh, a little bit of flotsam from from starship and maybe take it home as a souvenir we came up empty-handed but um uh but uh uh you know a lot of others did not from some of the stuff that i saw on on social media and so uh so it'll it'll be a, a bit of a, a a wait and see to see if it uh uh, what those recommendations are going to be the faa gave spacex a launch license for five years for this flight test and uh, one of my big questions is, does that license pertain to another test or do they have to get a new one based on mm. what happened uh, with the debris that they saw here? Do they have to move back the, the safe viewing area? Do they have to uh, uh, have some kind of debris mitigation and a recovery uh, plan in place that wasn't in plan for this one? That could add extra time. Well, uh, so you don't want to be pulling that debris out of people's skulls, which is a concern yeah, after what we saw. Yeah. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Accelerate your career with IT Pro and ACI Learning. Test your new skills in practice labs with real-world simulations, hands-on experience, and test preparation. Use the code TWIT30 at checkout for 30% off a standard or premium IT Pro membership. Check out go.acilearning.com slash TWIT to learn more. <laughs> 